Hey everyone, um, in early May, I think it's the second week of May, Nintex released a new version of Nintex Workflow 2013. Uh, it was for the English edition of Nintex Workflow, and uh, we're currently on version 3.0.7.0. Uh, now I want to talk about some of the new features that have come into the product, and the reason I actually want to talk about these is a lot of these uh, are the ones that I've been asking for, so I'm really excited about uh, this extra functionality. Uh, in the Nintex workflow, what you're looking at out here is this 2013 environment. You're actually able to set the expected duration of uh, you know, a particular workflow. It won't affect the running of the workflow, but it will give you an idea later on in reporting of how this particular workflow has run. You can also do the same thing for individual tasks. If you go into the, uh, where is it? the common button here, also the expected duration. Again, it's all about improving business processes and trying to get an idea of uh, you know, of how your workflows are running and where your bottlenecks are. But what has actually been added to this particular action is right down the bottom in the action configuration is we now have a due date where you can actually specify the due date for a particular task. Now, whereas with the expected duration, you simply specify uh, a number of days, hours, minutes, etc. With this due date, it actually sets a due date on the task item itself in the workflow tasks list and you can do calculations. So rather than saying, I expect this to run only two days, you can actually specify that this uh, task needs to be completed by uh, this particular date that you've done some sort of calculation on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's been asked for a lot, and now that it's in the actual product, uh, it's actually uh, very cool. The next one I wanna talk about is the, actually while I'm already in the, the flexi task action, here's something that I've actually like. If you go to task notification, you now have the ability to do BCC. So that means that uh, you can assign tasks to people, they will get emailed. Those tasks, you can actually BCC their manager or maybe just BCC the person who designed the workflow so that they can keep track of how, the, uh, yeah, how your workflows are being used and make sure that everything's okay, the emails are looking correct. And once that's all done, you can simply go in here and actually remove that user if you don't want it. Um, so it's it's good for actually you know, BCCing other people, but it's also good for, for debugging some stuff later on as well. Now the next thing I'll talk about is variables. So this actually works both in workflow variables. You'll see here I have a number of variables. And also on this page here, this is a user-defined action. It actually works in the variables and the parameters section of uh, a user-defined action also. What we're talking about here is the ability to sort uh, your variables. So you'll see I have a number of variables here. <clears throat> Usually I actually write text, but I just thought to put test in these. But um, if you wanted to find a particular variable, and sometimes it's not as neat as this. You know, you have six variables, sometimes you might have 50 variables throughout your workflow. And you want to find a particular number variable. If they're scattered like this, where you have single line text, number, and dates, and also all that sort of stuff, one cool thing you can do now is sort, uh, sort these. So you can actually click on uh, the column titles like name and sort by name. And this is in alphabetical order. Then you can click it again and it'll be in reverse alphabetical order. And the same thing for the other column. So if you want to sort by uh, variable type, or if you have certain variables that appear on a start form, you can actually sort it uh, by this as well to kind of get all those start variables at the top and get an idea of uh, you know, which ones you can use throughout your workflow. So that's pretty cool. And again, you can do this in. Uh, user-defined parameters, you can do the same sort of thing. And that's good if you have a number of scattered kind of input and output uh, parameters and you want to look at all the output parameters, you know, you could, you'll be able to do that. Now, the next one is something I really like. Let's minimize these. Is your state machine. Now, what happens with the state machine is you potentially build a whole bunch of different states and you have your change state and all that sort of stuff to tell it to tell it where to go. Now sometimes your first state is really not the state that the, the state machine actually goes into. So you know if you go into your state machine, you specify all your different states. Let's, let's make this state two. Let's say state two is the actual first state we want to do. Right? Now when you look at this workflow, it doesn't quite make sense that even though you have state one, state two, state three, this middle one is the actual state that we're starting with. So you might feel like you really want to move this state uh, to the left. 
So what you can now do is you can actually click on this drop down for that state and say move branch left. Bang. There it is there now. State 2 over here, state 1 here, and state 3 there. So this, again, all comes down to the maintainability of workflows so that later on when you need to go in and make modifications, it's that much easier for you. So if you can arrange these in such a way that makes sense to you, and hopefully makes sense to other uh, other workflow designers, it's, it's that much better for everybody. Now, although this is cool for the state machine, you need to remember we have other actions that have branches like this. We have the switch action. And we can create a value 3. And you can do the same thing. You can move these around. So now all of a sudden I have value 1 over here, value 2 over here, and value 3 in the middle. And the other one, for those who aren't really using this particular action, that run parallel actions. This is also a really cool one. This is actually uh, the ability to run uh, different actions at the same time, or different branches. And again, you can do, uh, you can actually, oh, there you go, you can do some other things. You can move this to the left, very cool. But you can say, I want to insert a new branch to the right, and you can start adding some logic into here. Move that left, or well, actually create a different one, but say, move left, move left, and there it goes. So again, it makes it really easy, and uh, hopefully it'll make it a lot easier for you to design workflows uh, from now on. Now, I've got two other things I want to talk about. you got the action set. Now, the action set uh, is just a way of grouping a whole bunch of actions. But the one thing that never really uh, sort of stood out when it came to building workflows is that you can do things like minimize this. So I'm going to say minimize, and it makes it a little bit easier for me to look at my workflow and then make modifications in the future. But what actually happened after that is when I was to save or publish this workflow, when I open it up again, it always opened up in, a, in the action sets being maximized. right? And then I have to go through again and minimize them you know, to make it uh, workable again. Well, now an index workflow actually remembers. So we do have a, a property that we keep. So if you minimize it, when you save this uh, workflow or this user defined action and you come back to it later, uh, it'll be minimized or maximized depending on what you had it. Uh, you had it then. Now the final thing I wanted to mention is in Central Admin, we've now added this extra option under the Nintex Workflow Management. It's called Manage Holidays. So you can actually go into here and you can specify uh, what holidays it is. So for example, uh, it's a Memorial Day and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but let's say it is for the 2nd of, of June and it happens on the 2nd of June every year. I, I don't know, it probably doesn't. And then you simply click on OK and now there's your, your holiday uh, that you've added. So we've basically added a lot more uh, you know, functionality that makes it easier for you to, to build workflows and maintain workflows and just uh, you know, design your workflows that much easier. So hopefully these are really helpful for you and, uh, and I'm looking forward to other updates and enhancements to Nutex Workflow in the future. Thanks for listening in and visiting the blog site.